Hi everyone, it's me, Spring the Fiber Enthusiast, and welcome to the channel. Um, this is the second part of our three parts to making this jumper. And if you haven't um, yet, I'm going to put it all into a playlist, and the podcast that I just recently did will be in that playlist as well. Um, this series isn't going to be for everybody, and I'm going to reiterate in each of the videos uh, the same thing, that this is how to measure your specific body to make a jumper to fit you the way you want it to. Um, now, part one went over the front and back panels. Today, we're going to be going over the sleeves and how to do the sleeves. Now, this is a box style uh jumper and if you want to taper it in and you feel com comfortable decreasing and increasing for that on both panels you're more than welcome to do so um i'm kind of square so <laughs> that fits for me all right so now we're going to get into the sleeve part and again we have our trusty measuring tape we're going to find the edge of our panel here and we're going to find out where it sits so by now we have it in a shirt so we can put it on and you can see where the edge of your panel sits on your shoulder then you're going to take your old trusty measuring tape and you're going to put it on that spot and you're going to measure down your arm to where you want your sleeve to end now if you want that sleeve to go straight down fine absolutely no problem. Measure it that way. Measure it all the way down your arm and wherever you want it to stop, you're just going to go around and around and around and around until you're all the way to the end. Just keep measuring as you go. So that is a little bit of how I measure for a sleeve. Now, if you're wanting to taper your sleeve and bring that bring it so that way it comes down nice and even all the way around and you get down to this point here um just before the very end it's pretty wide but not as wide as up here um and what you're gonna do is gradually do decreases even decreases so measuring down you know that at your elbow, you're going to want to start to taper a little bit because down here is going to be a little bit smaller than up here. Your forearm versus your bicep or bat wings. Um, <laughs> um, so you're going to want to start to taper a little bit at the elbow. And how I did that for this one was every 10 stitches. So I made sure that when I went around the arm, it was in multiples of 10. So on this one, it was 50 single crochets all the way around the arm. And then when I got down to a certain point, I measured, got down to a certain point, and I did a decrease every eight stitches, then I did two together. So all the way around, I just repeated that. I half double crocheted eight stitches and then half double crocheted two together and then repeat all the way around for that round. Then I marked it with a stitch marker because what I do to one side, I need to do to the other to make them match. So again, I start on the other side. I start with 50 single crochets all the way around the, the armhole and then I work my way out measuring as I go as to where I place those decreases, counting my rounds, things like that. Then when I got to the end, I wanted a cuff. So what I did was decrease every single two stitches down to comfortable for over my hand. And then I placed a ribbing, which I will show in the video as well, doing the ribbing. And that last round decrease. So that is how I measure the length of the arm. If you want to go the other direction and 
make a bell sleeve and make it flare out. You can absolutely, absolutely do so by increasing the stitches the same way you would decrease every so many stitches and slowly do that over, you know, inches, continue to increase. Now in, in these videos, as I've said numerous times, these ain't gonna be for everybody and this is going over basics um, and giving you a lot of different ideas to play with, not just one. Um, I chose to taper my sleeve in for this one. In the video, I go straight out because it is on a baby. I go straight out and then decrease down and put a, a sleeve on. I've done that before on others and it gives you that big poofy puff sleeve. That's fine too. Um, I happen to like that as well. Uh, it's all in your own personal preference in how you're going to work this up. So um, this again is entirely up to you. You don't even have to add sleeves. You can do just the front and back panels and leave it at that. Do it in cotton, make it a cover up. Again, with the collar, that'll be in the next video. And it is up to you whether you want a collar on it or not, or if you just want to trim around it and clean up the edge even better, fine. If you want to put a turtleneck on it, that's fine too. Completely entirely up to you. So that'll be in the next video. This was just going over how I measure for my sleeves how I get, you know, it tapered, um, just some overall uh, ideas as to how to do a sleeve for you and how you want it. Um, so that is the sleeve part. I hope that that is enough information. If you guys have any questions or would like me to go over something more in detail, um, by all means, please ask down in the comments section. I hope that this is being of some help to you for constructing your own jumper um, to fit you the way that you want it to. <laughs> all right, everyone, let's go ahead and jump into working on the sleeves and I will see you again for the collar part of our jumper. Today is going to be the sleeve part of our top that we've been working on. This is the second part of our three-part series. The final part will be the collar, and this is completely and entirely up to you. If you just want to make the top, that's perfectly okay. This part, it's done in two panels. You can follow it. Um by clicking on the little card in the upper right hand corner to go to part one and do just the panels and put them together and do your own thing after that if you so choose. Um, for this video, we will be working up the sleeves. And again, with the sleeves, these are optional. You can make them as long as you want. You can go three quarter length, you can go just short sleeve, you can go all the way to the wrist. That is completely and entirely up to you. You will see in this video, I will be going in a different color and all the way out. I want to identify each part with a different color. That's why I chose to jump to the smaller size and use a different color. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start those sleeves. All right, now how do I do my sleeves? Well, here's what I do. I measure from where my armpit is. So right at the very center of the armpit out to wherever I would like the sleeve to stop. Now, if I choose to put a cuff on it, I will allow room for that cuff as well. So I see that I'm at roughly about five and a quarter inches here for this baby sleeve. Now, if I was to do my own, I would be measuring out 17 and a half inches. 
to my wrist. Now, this may be different for you. So every individual is going to be different. Um, your sleeve may have more stitches around. It may be longer, it may be shorter. Basically, the idea of this tutorial is to show you how to pick up your stitches and attach a sleeve in the round and continue making the sleeve. Now we will be making a straight sleeve. There will be no decreases or any type of major flare except for a cuff at the very end. So we'll go ahead and start with that. I'm gonna grab a different color yarn and pick up stitches. Okay, so I chose a variegated or a self-striping, um, actually, yarn to work this up, uh, the sleeves and the collar when we get to that point. So I decided to use a Fable, um, which is by Premier. This is probably no longer available, um, just a little insight there. It was in a mystery bag several years ago now, and I've had it sitting on the shelf. Now this is a three weight, um, and I decided to go with it since the Caron that I used, the vintage Caron that I used, is very similar in size. So you can see here, the yellow is the one that I'm gonna be using, and the Caron is the other one. Okay, now, I will start with a slip knot on my hook, or should I say, placing my hook into a stitch. Now I'm gonna find the most center stitch of the armpit. Now I have this tail that I need to sew in yet, but I wanna find the most center stitch here. And now I can place the slip knot on my hook. I'm gonna pull that through like such, and chain one. Now for this, I'm gonna go back into that same stitch and single crochet. What I wanna do is create a base to work off of. So I'm gonna work my way around finding the next stitch and single crochet, and the next stitch, single crochet. And I'm gonna evenly disperse these single crochets around. So here I have a double crochet. I'm gonna place two single crochets into that stitch. Then I'm gonna find the next available stitch and single crochet. And you're just gonna to continue to work these single crochets all the way around until you have reached the end. Now, when you come around to the end, you're gonna to want to check the amount of stitches and jot that down because what you do to one side, you're gonna to have to do to the other. So if you have 60 stitches on this side, you need 60 stitches on this side. So that way the sleeves are equal. All right, so I'm just gonna continue working around this sleeve, placing the uh, single crochets, giving myself a good little base to work off of. We're gonna be doing a simple uh, half double crochet sleeve all the way around and around and around until we have reached the length that we need but I like to start with a good foundation, something good and solid like a single crochet round. So I'm just gonna continue working until I have reached the end of it and slip stitch to my very first single crochet. And once you've worked your way around you also want to kind of lay it down before you finish the round and begin your next round. You kind of want to lay it down and make sure that uh, your stitches aren't too much. And what I mean by that is it'll flare out 
big time if there's too many stitches. If there's not enough, it's going to shrink and pull it together. And if there's too many, it's going to stand out wide. We want to be as even as possible working around this. Almost to the end here. Last couple of stitches. Okay, so here we are. I'm gonna lay it down and take a look and see what kind of shape I've got going on. All right, so it seems like it's evenly distributed around. We're not big time flaring out like this and we're not shrunk in like this where it's pulling that sleeve together. It's laying nice and flat. No issues with it being too many stitches or too little stitches. So now I can just slip stitch to that very first stitch like such. Now for your half double crochet round, you're just going to chain one and half double crochet back into that stitch and place a stitch marker into that stitch. That way you know you're <clears throat> working in the round. You can start and stop in the same spot by slip stitching to the very first stitch when you've made your, all, your trip all the way around. So here, let me get some more yarn out here. Once again, don't forget to count your stitches to to make sure that you put the same amount of stitches on the other sleeve. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue working half double crochet rounds. And this is just simply one half double crochet in every single single crochet stitch all the way around. Just like this. And when you get to the end, you're just going to simply slip stitch to the very first stitch, chain one, and half double crochet back into that stitch, and continue working around and around and around. All right, I will meet up with you when I have reached the sleeve length that I want this sleeve to be at. Okay, so once you have the majority of your sleeve, the length of it that you want, and you want to put a cuff on it, we're going to do a real simple cuff and we're going to do a simple one round decrease and then do a relief stitch cuff. So this is what it's going to look like here. Now, of course, on the bigger ones, you know, on a bigger sleeve, a bell sleeve is nice. But if you don't want that, you can decrease every so often. You just need to make sure to jot down your notes if you decide to start decreasing on the sleeve um, and just take notes as to where you're decreasing so you can replicate that on the other sleeve and slowly make it smaller. Um, that's just kind of all in personal preference. I'm just going to give you a basic um, way to do a sleeve, which is these half double crochets and now I'm down to the point where I have the amount of sleeve that I wanted. And now I'm going to do a simple one round decrease. Now for this, all I'm going to do is half double crochet two together all the way around for one round. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna go into that hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. I'm gonna go straight into the next stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop. I've now got four loops on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and go through all four. I'm gonna place that stitch marker back into that stitch there. And now we're gonna repeat that all the way around. Yarn over, go into your next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Go straight into the next stitch, Yarn over, pull up a loop, four loops on your hook, and yarn over, go through all four. 
So we're just going to continue that all the way around. And what that'll do is decrease the amount of stitches exactly in half. Now, if you come to the end of the round and you find that you have one extra stitch, just half double crochet that last stitch. It's not that big a deal. Um, you can half double crochet three together if you would like. Not too big a deal. So we're just going to continue to work all the way around for the decrease round here. Just like this. Coming up to the last two stitches here of decrease. Just like that, I'm going to remove that stitch marker. Now I'm going to replace that stitch marker. That just indicates to me that that's the last stitch of the round. And this other stitch is the first stitch of the round. So now I'm going to join in the round here by slip stitching to that very first two together half double crochet. And now we're going to start our cuff. And that is going to be double crochet one round every stitch. So we're going to chain one, two, three. That's our first double crochet. And we're going to go right into the next one and double crochet. And you're going to complete that all the way around. One double crochet in every single stitch. Just like that. Once you have completed the round, you'll slip stitch to the top of your starting chain. The chain three, you'll slip stitch to that third chain. All right, coming up to the last stitch of the round here. One last double crochet. Now we're going to remove that for a moment and slip stitch to the top of your chain three. So you're turning or you're starting chain there. You can slip stitch to it. Now we're going to slip stitch around the post, making that turn into a front post. So we're going to go around behind it yarn over, pull a loop through, and slip stitch. What that does is that pushes that post outward and creates a front post. Now you're going to chain one, two, and three, and we're going to back post double crochet the next stitch, and that is going to be our ribbing. Front post, double crochet, back post, double crochet. And you're going to do that all the way around. Once you've made it to the end of the round, we're going to create a front post right off from the very beginning. We're not going to slip stitch to that first beginning chain. We're actually going to go in behind the chain, yarn over, and pull up a loop. That turns it into a front post. Now we're going to slip that stitch and chain one, two, and three. And then we're going to repeat our pattern. Back post your next back post and front post the next front post. So you're just going to continue to work around. And for this particular top that is all I did now you can make your cuff as big as you want as far as length you can make it several inches long if you so choose make it a really long cuff um, there's so many things that you can do 
um, as far as being extra creative and making it your own. This is just a example, one small sample as to how to make a garment and do the, the sleeve part and add a cuff to it. So there's no real actual, this is how many you have to do as far as rounds or stitches. This is going over how to measure and get the size for you and your body type. Um, it makes it a lot easier. To make your own garments when you are measuring your own body and uh, using those measurements to design your and make your own garment as far as tops and stuff. Okay, coming up on the last couple of stitches here. All right, so once you've completed the amount of rounds that you want, you're just going to simply slip stitch to that top chain of your chain three. Like that. And then what I would do is one and two chains and cut away from my ball of yarn. Pull that loop through, pinch down on those chains and pull the tail and that pushes a knot to your stitch there. So that's actually all done, all said, all done, nice and tight. Now I can sew in the ends. Okay, so that is it for the sleeve. So that's it for the sleeve. That's all there is to making the sleeve with the cuff. Now this is a poof sleeve because you have a decrease at the very end, but it's very straight. As I said earlier in the video, you can alter that however you so choose. You can do decreases along here. You can do decreases on the top and the bottom every so often. Just remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other in order for it to match up correctly. Um, super easy to add sleeves once you get the hang of it. Everything is new the first time you try it and getting used to this new technique may be a little tricky at first and that's to be expected, but after that, you should sail right through adding sleeves to any of the garments that you are making. Part three will be our collar. We will come back for part three and start working up a collar for around the neck area. Now, if you have made this to this point and you don't want to add a collar, that's perfectly okay as well, but you might check it out if you want to add a collar to something later on. I will see you in that video and be blessed, be a blessing, and until next time, bye for now.